Hi, I'm Chris Good, and I'm a spine surgeon at the Virginia Spine Institute. I'm going to be explaining the diagnosis of spondylolisthesis in patient terms. Now, I'm sorry, I didn't make it up, but spondylolisthesis means forward slippage of one spine bone on top of another. So in, in order to really understand this, we have to kind of look at how the spine works and a little bit about the anatomy to explain what spondylolisthesis means. So if we look at the spine, it is a series of bones and discs that are stacked one on top of another. And these are all connected to each other and they move like cars on a roller coaster. And as we live our lives, these discs and bones all move in relation to each other. Now, they are meant to be perfectly lined up and the discs and the muscles and everything really hold the bones in place so that nothing slips. Now, the nerves come off our brain and our spinal cord and they're running inside the spine like a cable inside a conduit pipe. And a little nerve branches out by each disc in the low back and those nerves come out and then they run down our legs like little electrical cables. So spondylolisthesis is a situation where instability develops between one or more bones and the bones can start to slip or shift back and forth. Now, there's a couple different reasons that spondylolisthesis can develop. One common uh, cause is for people to have a stress fracture in their back at a young age. This is very common, like 6% of the country has this. And what happens is a small crack or a stress fracture develops in the back part of the spine. Now, if that happens, it separates the supporting structures in the back of the spine from the discs in the front of the spine. Now, at a young age, people really do very well with this, but over the years, this can lead to a situation where it puts extra stress on the disc, and the disc can start to become damaged, can start to crack and tear, and this stress fracture ultimately gaps open, and you start to get slippage between the bones, or spondylolisthesis. Another very common cause is what we call degenerative spondylolisthesis. And what that means is some kind of degeneration or arthritis in the spine has happened and that's led to the slippage. And if you think about how that could work, if someone starts to develop degeneration of their discs, their discs start to crack and tear and wear over the years. That's a very common, normal part of human aging. But if that happens and the disc starts to wear away, it's no longer holding the bones in the right position. And as we live our lives and move, we can start to get slippage back and forth between the bones, or spondylolisthesis. Now, People who have spondylolisthesis can have all different kinds of symptoms. And there's lots of people who have spondylolisthesis and it doesn't bother them at all. And so people who have spondylolisthesis with no symptoms, really, other than focusing on being healthy and taking good care of their backs, there's really a, not a lot that they should be doing beyond that. But some people with spondylolisthesis will develop back pain, pain that goes all the way across their back, typically gets worse with the kind of activities they do. Uh, and that can be a, as a result of the slipping of the bones. And then when the bones slip, it can trigger all kinds of muscle spasm. And next thing you know, one little problem has locked up the whole back because of muscle spasm. Now, if people are having back pain from spondylolisthesis, many times they can learn the right kind of exercises to strengthen the core muscles and the structures that support the back. And by getting those really, really strong, it can overcome the symptoms that go along with spondylolisthesis. And really that is the kind of treatment that the vast majority of people with spondylolisthesis need. Now, most people with spondylolisthesis do not go on to get nerve damage or to require surgery, but if the slippage progresses, it can get to the point where one bone slides forward on another and that starts to kink the nerves that come out of the back, call it causing what we call spinal stenosis or narrowing around the nerves. That can cause sciatica pain going down the leg. It can cause nerve problems because if the nerve is pinched here, any muscle that that nerve controls could be weak. And if people start to get slippage causing nerve problems, then more involved treatments uh, can ultimately be required. Uh, if people are getting nerve damage and other treatments aren't working, then a surgical procedure can be the best option for certain people. Now, spondylolisthesis means there's an instability in between the bones. That's the root cause. So if someone needs to have surgery for spondylolisthesis, it usually does require a procedure to stabilize that instability or a fusion procedure which literally welds those two bones together. 
Another type of surgery that is very common and popular, which you might think of as a, a microsurgery or a laser surgery or a laminectomy, those are surgeries where a surgeon goes in and shaves away some tissue trying to make more space around a nerve. And that's a very common procedure. But that's something you have to be very careful about if there's an instability. Because if someone has instability and you go removing more tissue, that doesn't help the instability. In fact, in many cases, it actually makes it worse. So most people, if they have spondylolisthesis with bad nerve problems, do require a fusion surgery. Now what I'd like to do is show you an x-ray of a patient with spondylolisthesis. So this is an x-ray of a patient with spondylolisthesis. And what we're looking at is a side view looking into the low back. And what we see is the bones and the discs stacked one on top of another. And we can see that these bones are all well aligned in the upper spine. We can actually see the holes, see the holes here. That's the space where the nerves are branching out. And so the nerves come out through this hole and then they run down our legs. Again, little electrical cables. We see a situation here where the disc between L4 and L5 is completely gone. And because there is an, uh, no support between L4 and L5, L4 has started to slide forward on top of L5. So we can see this step off that's taking place. This slippage of the bone is called spondylolisthesis. Now this particular spondylolisthesis happens to be the result of a stress fracture that happened when uh, the patient was a teenager. Now uh, they're on in their adult life. Um, but this is something that has been wearing over the years, living a good quality of life, but it's finally gotten to the spot where the nerve is getting pinched here. And we can see the space for the nerve at a normal level. When the bones collapse and slide, it can narrow the space for the nerves ultimately causing nerve damage. And so this is a, a relatively severe spondylolisthesis that ultimately did go on to uh, be treated with a surgical procedure. And when someone has this kind of instability, I can't go in and just shave a little space around the nerves, because if I do, that slippage just gets worse. And then that's a potential setup for a failed surgery, which nobody wants. So the surgical procedure in this situation is a procedure to weld or fuse the bones together. Now, there are a number of different ways to do that, and how the best way is really depends on the type of problem the patient has. One thing that's important to note for this patient is because this disc is so eroded, they've lost the proper alignment of their spine. And when it's time to do surgery to fuse the spine, it's critical to do this in a way that restores a normal alignment. Our backs are meant to curve in a certain amount. And if disc problems cause the spine to curve forward, that causes a great deal of pain and spasm for people. And if a surgeon doesn't restore the spine back to the right alignment with effusion, that can lead to much higher rates of degeneration of the other discs down the road. And so the type of surgery that is done has to fuse the bones together, but it also has to get the right spinal alignment. And so the surgical procedure we did for this patient, because we really need to prop those bones up, was actually a surgery first done through the front portion of the spine, going in below the belly button, and actually coming in from the front to clean this disc out and put a cage or a shim in that will restore the height of those bones. Okay, when we do that, it takes away the pain from the slipping and lining the bones up again opens up the space for where the nerve needs to come out. So this is just a, a model showing uh, the kind of implant that we happen to use in this surgery. And we can see the implant is shaped like a triangle and it literally goes in and wedges the bones back into a proper alignment. So this patient actually had a two-step surgery, first going in the front of the spine to realign the spine, and then second going into the other side of the spine to place additional implants for stability. So if we look at the surgical steps uh, on the x-rays, this is the x-ray from before surgery, and now we've gone in to put in an implant to restore the alignment. And so we can now see this is the implant that we put in, just like what I'm showing you in this model. And we can now see that the bones are lined up in a much better orientation. And if we look at the space for the nerve, which is all squished, now the nerve has much more space around it.
And the great thing about this is this surgery was done without even touching the nerve. We didn't have to go in and work around the nerve and worry about scar tissue. We were able to do this simply by realigning the spine. Now, we can see that this implant was put in from the front and then a minimally invasive surgery was used to put uh, screws or implants in, in the back of the spine. That was necessary because the patient's bones were so unstable, we really needed to hold them. And so here's the final surgery, so we can see the cage that's put in and the screws that are put in, and we've achieved an excellent realignment of the spine. And if we look at the, the malangulation here, we've now restored an excellent alignment of the spine. And so, uh, again, while most people uh, don't require surgical procedure for spondylolisthesis, for patients who are having more severe spondylolisthesis or more severe symptoms, if it comes to a decision of surgery, it really is important to factor in spine alignment in order to optimize not only the success of the surgery now, but to preserve the health of the rest of the spine down the road. So in summary, if you're having back pain, certainly if you're having nerve problems down into your legs, numbness or weakness in the legs, that is a sign that you should really get evaluated. Uh, and again, while spondylolisthesis is very common, the vast majority of people we're taking care of, we're focusing on their exercise and their lifestyle. And so for most people, we can have a, a pretty easy solution to this.